Good morning, everyone. Six minutes after the hour of 6 a.m., it's a Friday. Finally Friday, May 17, 2019. Finally Friday, finally Friday, Shane. Finally Friday. <laughs> it's finally Friday. Oh, by the way, it's finally Friday. Yeah, and it's 46 degrees outside. Thanks for coming along with us and uh, taking us along with you to work or uh, out with the animals or whatever you're doing this morning. Uh, hey, we're happy to be along with you. Thanks for including us in your morning. <laughs> And uh, so let's see uh, weather for today. Uh, we're looking at 51 degrees today, uh, 34 the overnight low, and rain. Rain is going to start uh, probably about 10 or 11 o'clock this morning in earnest. Uh, we got about an 80% chance uh, overnight. And some snow might be mixed in there as well. So there might be a dusting of snow uh, uh, on your uh, tulips tomorrow. 46 will be the high on Saturday, 38 the overnight low, and uh, the rain tapers off on Saturday, and uh, Sunday's pretty nice, uh, 45 will be the high, 33 the overnight low, mostly cloudy, very little chance of rain, but then the rain comes back for the whole week, uh, Monday, 45 will be the high, 35 the low, rain and snow mix, uh, not much accumulation though, and Tuesday, same story, 50 uh, will be the high, 35 the overnight low, showers. Wednesday, 46, 33 the overnight low, rain and sh uh, snow showers mixed. And uh, Thursday, well, same story, 49 will be the high, 36 the overnight low, p.m. showers. And uh, moving into next Friday, uh, 56 will be the high, 36 the overnight low, and showers. So we're going to get rain uh, off and on all week long. Uh, so... Uh, well, we're we're almost <laughs> we're almost there. So, <laughs> well, what can I tell you? It's <laughs> it's it's uh, what it's May in uh, good old uh, <laughs> it's May in good old uh, Bozeman, Montana. By by the way, Tom, it's Friday. It is Friday. It's Friday. Finally, Friday. I'm excited. Friday's finally here. <laughs> All right, in this day in history, 1792, the New York Stock Exchange was founded by brokers meeting under a tree on what is now Wall Street. And if I remember, I think it was a Joshua tree. Uh, That's right, 11 I, Wall Street, yeah. lower Manhattan, where that big bull sits. Yeah. World, the world's largest stock exchange by market capitalization, $30.1 trillion, folks. Ooh. So everything you do every day, walk through, eat through, drive, you know, Whatever, thirty trillion dollars. The average daily trading volume, one hundred and sixty-nine billion dollars. Not wow. bad. Mostly currency today. Yeah. You used to be. Uh, you, you could uh, attend. Uh, it's it's beginning with the what was called the Buttonwood Agreement, as Tom pointed out, signed on May seventeenth, seventeen ninety-two, with uh, twenty-four brokers. And mm -hmm. uh, basically, what did they trade? Tobacco. Mm -hmm. Cotton and wheat. Yeah. So it's a commodities market to begin with. And mm -hmm. originally, twenty, those twenty-four uh, uh, signees became fifty-eight owners of the exchange, and then it became the uh, what was it? It was uh, turned turned into the Internet Intercontinental Exchange, uh, a holding company, and then it became part of Euronext, and they merged together with the uh, euro next in 2007 so now it's a global market folks it's big yeah. it's it's beautiful and it makes the world go round volume <laughs> huge there you are and uh, everybody thinks it's a building full of crooks <laughs> probably but it's not it's a it's a building full of the world's commerce that's what yeah it is. that's true <laughs> all right well, in 1829, in this date, John Jay, American statesman for the first uh, and the first Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, died at 83. John Jay, quite a name in history. Yes, indeed, and and uh, keep in mind, September 17, 1787, when when your Constitution and Bill of Rights was ratified by all the states, but they didn't get around to the third branch of government, which was the. Uh, the uh, judicial branch, because they had to set up the court. The first court, of course, was for shipping. Mm -hmm. It was a shipping court, and then they sent up, set up the, uh, you know, the Supreme Court, the SCOTUS, as we like to uh, use yeah. the atom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On this date in 1875, the first Kentucky Derby was run. The winner was Astrides. 
That's right. Volcano was the second, uh, you know, the second mm-hmm. year. So what a name. You got to take that yeah. into account. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Aristides, point, I think it was. Yeah. Not a oh, It's Aristides. Aristides. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That. yeah. 1.5 mile race, the shortest mm-hmm. of the three big races. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, it, it uh, was the beginning of uh, American horse racing, which had taken place all over the South because of the horses that they used. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the, the the North was a bit ahead of them with steam. <laughs> K- Kentucky thoroughbred, thoroughbreds. <laughs> and uh, unless I'm mistaken, Secretariat holds all three titles, all three uh, right. winning uh, yeah. winning uh, times. That's right. Yeah. 1940, the Nazis occupied Brussels, Belgium during World War II. So. Yeah, this was the beginning of the end up for Europe at the beginning of the war, of course. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they came through the center land and, and um, through the gap there and took the uh, lower countries of Denmark, Belgium, and uh, then continued on down into France. It was, uh, wow, pretty yeah. amazing. Tough time. Pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Tough time, baby. Well, in 1946, President Harry S. Truman seized control of the nation's railroads, uh, delaying a, a threatened strike by engineers and trainmen. So, don't see that much yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah, he, that's right. He he seized the railroads, in effect, nationalized them, mm-hmm. and um, they two <laughs> two railroad unions said, "Well, tough," and they struck anyway. <laughs> so the entire national railroad system was shut down. Immobilizing at the time 24,000 freight trains, 175,000 passengers a day for two days. Public anger, anger mounted, and Truman himself drafted an irate message to Congress that called on veterans to form a lynch mob and destroy the union leaders. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, now, now you're talking. Yeah, talk, was, talk about but, Trump being this, this, forceful. This, this, <laughs> right. uh, real quick, every single one of the strikers and their demagogue leaders. Have been living in luxury. Now I want you, who are my con- uh, comrades in arms, this is Truman, yeah. to come with me and eliminate the Lewises, the Whitneys, and the Johnstons, the Communist Brigades, all important union officials, and the Russian senators and representatives. Let's put transportation and production back to work. That's Hang right. a few traitors and make our country safe for democracy. <laughs> all right. Well, can you imagine if Trump made that tweet today? Yeah, let's, oh. let's hang a few immigrants to kind of deter this caravan. Yeah, yeah, let's hang them all. Boy, the, those were the days, weren't they, when you could say what you wanted to say? Oh, hey, well, man. a lot of people wish they were talking about lawyers. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, and uh, let's see, we've also got to go back to uh, 1954 because the Supreme Court issued its landmark Brown versus the Board of Education. And that declared that racially segregated public schools were inherently unequal. And, uh, of course, that uh, started George Wallace and uh, Eisenhower sending troops to wherever. But um, somebody between the two of us knows which school was the first integrated school in the United States. Don't yeah, we, Shane? I, I, yeah, I was 18 at the time. It was a unanimous decision, 9 to 1. It was based on the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. And you may ask, why do I know so much about Brown versus uh, the U.S.? Th- uh, two, 349 U.S. 294. Well, I was in uh, Thomas Jefferson High School in Denver, and it was a federal court in Colorado, or in that district, that forced Denver to be the first city in the U.S. to segregate or desegregate, and it was a mess. I have to tell you, we were locked in our rooms. Well, uh, African American students roamed the halls and took over the school for the first six months. We were locked in our rooms like ten times. And Life magazine had uh, a story about it, and pictures from Washington High School downtown Denver, where girls were attacked and raped in the stairwells, and their dresses lit on fire. It was a mess. Wow. Just, just a bad, yeah, it was a bad time, guys. Holy smokes. Man. Wow. It was a real bad experience, I have to tell you. Yeah. Uh, from our text line, something I was going to mention, too, that uh, 478-8298, uh, Ronald Reagan fired uh, air traffic controllers way back then. Uh, That's right. I was, I was thinking of that when uh, we were talking about Truman uh, nationalizing the uh, uh, railroads. That, um, But they did uh, have 
uh, other people to go in and <laughs> man the man the controls. They didn't have a bunch of people that could run trains, <laughs> and, they, and they never hired them back. And I don't think they hung a single one. No, they didn't. Yeah, I don't think they hung any of them. So <laughs> you're right about that. So. Well, let's see. In 1971, on this date, uh, the uh, musical Godspell opened in uh, Off Broadway, and quite yeah, a, quite a musical of the time. Yeah, the yeah, that '60s and, uh, music and all that going on. Yeah, a religious Godspell, as a matter of fact, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty, uh, yeah. pretty interesting. So. We're going to take a quick break uh, because we got Montana News and Agriculture. We got the Headwaters Livestock Market Report and uh, some other things. So, hey, we'll be right back <laughs> right after this. 22 minutes after the hour of 6 a.m., it's Friday, May 17th, uh, 2019. Finally, Friday, 46 degrees outside. Shaman Tobin, half man, half amazing in Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, on the air with me and Tommy Galoff, your morning mayor in the house. You are on the KMMS Morning Soapbox with, of course, Tom and Shane. Otherwise, there'd be other, two other people here, I guess, with different <laughs> names Probably. Yeah. somehow. <laughs> I don't know. All right, on this day in history, uh, something that Shane and I remember quite well, of course, because we were riveted to the screens, the Watergate scandal of 1973, uh, the uh, Nixon administration, uh, er Ehrlichman, Halderman, uh, (laughs) you you name it. And the word of today is metonymy. Watergate is not an analogy, it's a metonymy, which is a figure of speech in which a thing or concept is referred to by the name of something closely associated with that thing or concept, as uh, in yours truly, Crazy Gate crazy is a gate. metonymy. Yep, 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 we put gate on the back of everything after Watergate yeah. came along, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was Hillary Gate, it was Bush Gate, it was everything, so <laughs> you name it. But, Every uh, president's had one. But, uh, oh, man, we were riveted to the screens, though. Uh, black and white, uh, oh. <laughs> watching uh, watching uh, all these people come up and testify. And uh, the look on everybody's face when they said, well, everything in the Oval Office is recorded. Right. <laughs> Everybody goes, what? <laughs> Since when? That's right. <laughs> Let's and, get those and, tapes. <laughs> and, and, and the whole privacy thing you're hearing and talk, people are talking about, which we covered earlier, yeah. was because the uh, Watergate Committee considered itself a grand jury and as yeah. such had um, access and the right to look at any grand jury information. No, they could, yeah. Yeah, they were quite a, yeah, uh, quite a quite a group of uh, folks and uh, quite a group of uh, people that testified as well. So it was, Indeed. And it lasted a while, too. It was it was riveting. It was like a soap opera. You know, I mean, we tuned in every day you know, to watch this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, in 1980, on this date, rioting that claimed 18 lives erupted in Miami's Liberty City neighborhood after an all-white jury in Tampa acquitted four former Miami police officers of fatally beating a black man. So... Yeah, well, we've heard that story before, haven't we? Uh, Rodney yes, King yeah. and uh, uh, several others. So, uh, yeah, it's quite There's a... Several cities in the U.S. have burned because of things such that's as that. That's for sure. Yeah, and uh, Liberty City, of course, was no uh, <laughs> no offense there either. So, yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. 1987, an Iraq warplane attacked the U.S. Navy frigate Stark in the Persian Gulf, killing 37 sailors. Iraq and the United States called the attack a mistake. Right. 21 were injured. And uh, as you said, it was in the Persian Gulf. And it, it's an amazing story because, you know, it's it's one of those stories like, you know, the Bay of Tonkin, which was the cause for the Vietnam War. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, this basically almost... Uh, Moved out of the U.S. into that position, but it didn't happen until that great Hussein invaded Kuwait, and then all hell broke loose. Remember that? Yeah, that was yeah, that, was the, that was the first war on TV with exit missiles going by hotel rooms of I CNN know. Down, <laughs> down the street. Remember it? Know, and they got the camera yeah, and stuck the camera out, <laughs> and then and he watched the exit missile turn at the next corner. Yeah, right? Oh yeah, make a right <laughs> turn was, and. <laughs> Oh my God. Uh, from our text line, 478 8298, word of the day, and in my opinion, the greatest invention ever made toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
probably true. <laughs> well, it's important because yeah. we all use it. But there's none in Venezuela, right, Tom? Yeah, that's right. Uh, now, I, I don't know if that's a, 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 a slam on our show or not. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> Well, on this date in uh, 1992, orchestra leader uh, Lawrence Welk turned off the bubble machine and died at the age of 89. So, And all I can say to that is a one and a, a two. A one and, and a two, yep. <laughs> 1996, President Bill Clinton signed Megan's Law, a measure requiring uh, neighborhood notifications when sex offenders moved in. Big change for for a, a local law enforcement mm-hmm. and for neighborhood rights because it you know it has made a difference in protecting young children in particular. Sure, yeah. Uh, Nineteen ninety eight, New York uh, Yankees pitcher David Wells became the thirteenth player in ma- modern uh, major league history to throw a perfect game and a four zero victory over the Minnesota Twins. So, yeah, Good. known as the Boomer, he played for both uh, New York Yankees and the Toronto Blue Jays. All right. And in 1998, Labor Party leader Ehud Barak unseated Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in uh, Israeli elections. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, uh, of course, Benjamin Netanyahu came back after that and mm-hmm. uh, won again. But, yeah, it's one of those things in the history of uh, Israel. You know, he was the 10th Prime Minister, of course, and... Uh, mm-hmm. uh, really pushed wanting peace between, uh, you know, the Palestinians and, and uh, the, the Israelis. Uh, educated in uh, U.S. in the United States at Stanford University. I wonder if his parents paid to get him in. What do you think? I bet they did, yeah, I'm sure, yeah. He was, he was probably rowing, right? Or... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no, he was matzo ball making, <laughs> yeah. the matzo ball class. Yeah, well, you saw the changes they're talking about making or have now made with, uh, you know, the SAT testing. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, we want yeah. to talk about that a little later on. Yeah. So. Yeah. 2000, uh, two former Ku Klux Klansmen were arrested on murder charges in the 1963 church bombing in Birmingham, Alabama that killed four black girls. Boy, all the way back then. And on this date in 2004, Massachusetts became the first state to allow same-sex marriage. Which is amazing, because in Five Things You Need to Know, we find out today, mm-hmm. Taiwan has now also um, agreed yeah. to allow same-sex first, marriage. First, first, first Asian uh, Asian country to do that. That's so. right. Kabam. Bang. All right. We got a duck hatter, pay a couple bills. We uh, I don't know about Montana State News. <laughs> I don't know. I've emailed and called and told them and whatever. So we'll see what Montana State News is. <laughs> this morning but at any rate we got fox news which will be new we got the weather that'll be new and uh, all of our stuff which will be new so we'll be right back with local stuff right after this 23 minutes till the top of the hour it's a friday may 17 2019 46 degrees outside uh tommy galoff your morning mayor in the house shame and tobin half man half amazing in vancouver british columbia and you're on the kmms morning soapbox and well, in local news, hey, guess what, Shane? Another six-story building. Oh, wow. Are Bozeman. you not lucky or what? I'm excited. <laughs> Yet another big building going up in Bozeman. A developer has filed plans with the city to build a six-story building along Bozeman Creek at Mendenhall. And uh, located between Bozeman and Rouse Avenues, the uh, East End Flats would feature 47,000 square feet of commercial office and residential space blocks away from a slew of other new or upcoming hotels and mixed-use buildings on Mendenhall. So the building at 240 East Mendenhall would be uh, constructed on what is now a parking lot west of Montana Provisions, and uh, wouldn't require any building demolition. Uh, uh, having an open lot in a prime location downtown is rare, said uh, Sonny uh, Odegaard, a uh, sales and listing agent with the Gene Cook, uh, Gene Cook Real Estate Agency. And uh, Hooks Ranch LLC is the property owner, the same developer behind the Barn District, and uh, who owned the old Osborne building that was demolished due to severe damage from the 2009 downtown gas explosion. So, uh, pretty nice looking uh, building. Uh, so, uh, once again. Hey, all I want to know is 
is there are there going to be a hundred parking stalls underneath that building? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, there aren't. That's, <laughs> no, that's there all aren't. I wanted. <laughs> there are not. So I don't know where you're going to park because uh, this thing's going to be built on a parking lot. So <laughs> that's right. Let's go to the phones. Five two two talk is the number. Five two two eight two five five. Call you on the morning soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? Okay. Oh. All right. Well, I guess. We'll talk about something else. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, also, uh, when I was a kid, uh, Shane, I, I lived in the library when I was a kid. In the so summers, did I. In the summers. You know, you go to the library and there'd be all these books and everything. And, uh, boy, you'd sit there and spend the day reading. And uh, it was the equivalent of daytime TV or video games or whatever, which all, all the things we didn't have at that time, but we went to the library and, uh, well, Bozeman kids are challenged to read a hundred books, uh, this uh, summer. And, uh, hopefully, uh, a lot of them will uh, do that because, uh, uh, a lot of folks are just getting away from reading books. Uh, you know, even, uh, uh, you know, my wife was an avid reader. She's, uh, kind of tapered off her reading, but, uh, you know, she would, dive through books i always read them whenever i went on speaking uh things somewhere to pass the time on an airplane or you know in the hotel room or whatever we'd uh, take a, a couple books along to read and uh, you know it's just a really um uh, you get to use your imagination you know you it, 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 it's it, right. it exercises your brain <laughs> that's right my grandmother taught me to read at five and told me you can go anywhere you want in the world in a book yeah, that's right. You absolutely can. So we got to take another quick break. We'll be right back in two minutes. 17 minutes for the top of the hour. It's Friday, May 17th, 2019, 46 degrees outside. Welcome to the Morning Sub Box with Tom and Shane. And uh, Montana's federal delegation is calling for a swift end to the trade war with China after negotiations between President Donald Trump and Xi Jinping fell apart late last week with a, a negotiation stalled. Trump imposed tariffs on $200 billion worth of Chinese imports, and China has retaliated with $60 billion worth of tariffs on American goods, and Trump is now preparing to impose tariffs on the remaining $300 billion worth of Chinese exports to the United States. So Senator Steve Daines spoke to the Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin uh, during the uh, Senate hearing on Wednesday, highlighting the negative effects of the trade war on farmers, ranchers, the outdoor industry, and Rec Silk Silicon, a factory in Butte. Uh, I will tell you that we need uh, results, said Danes, a Bozeman uh, Republican, to Mnuchin. I think we need them soon. So, well, there's no question, Shane, that these things are causing problems for uh, a variety of industries. Some are doing well. Uh, we talked the other day about uh, steel not moving very much and also uh, aluminum aluminum, aluminum uh, doing well. So uh, we uh, – but uh, farmers, uh, you know, we talked about the soybeans and the milk the yesterday that uh, – uh, they do uh, quite a bit of soybeans with us for uh, milk cows and other feed uh, over there. So uh, be interesting to see how long this thing is going to last. I think we can outlast um, uh, China, certainly. But can the farmers? That's the question. Well, and we talked about the fact that, you know, it, it, Trump's waiting to hear that word, yes, because he doesn't accept no. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. the bottom line, I, 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 the giggle I get out of this is how they retaliated with tariffs on sixty billion dollars worth of products. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, like it's it's they've been tariffing the United States for thirty five years. So uh, that trade what's, balance. Yeah, what's different? What's new? Yeah. Well, before all before all this started, ninety five percent of non agricultural stuff came in with no, um, you know, no uh, tariff at all. That's right. Yeah. Let's take a phone call. Five two two talk is the number. Well, they left. All right. Sorry about that. No problemo. Maybe they're back. Let's see. Caller, you on the air? What's going on? How you doing, Thomas? Darren. Hey, Aaron. Man, I like the tariffs that, that Trump's doing. I think that they're good. I think that Clint needs to calm down a little bit. I think he's looking at that whole deal with the milk and the cows in China. Mm -hmm. We can't cut up our nose to spite our face. We need manufacturing in this country. We do. You know, we, we need, rather than...
buying those toys from the Chinese or whatever other slave labor country we can have them made in. We need to buy them here. Mm-hmm. We need to have them made here. We need, to, we, you know, I mean, think local. This whole globalist idea that we're all, the world's going to end if we don't sell our souls to China. I mean, come on, Clint. You're better than that. That's the one thing I want to say about that. Secondly, the abortion deal, um, you know, that whole abortion thing, I think it's great what Alabama's doing. And the reality is is that no matter what, all women always have control of their reproductive rights. They, you know, and, and it starts and stops. It starts with their choice of getting pregnant or not. And it ends when their choice affects somebody else, now, somebody else is their baby. So you're right to stop where mine begins. And everybody, it's just like health care. You have the uh, right to free health care in this country, and it's called exercise and proper nutrition. You know, mm-hmm. you don't have the right, you don't have the right to take my money and pay for your doctor visit, right? Because that, that infringes on my right. So your right to free health care is there. Your right to reproductive care is always there. You can choose not to get pregnant. You can take the pill. You can choose not to sleep around. There's, there's many different choices for you that, that your rights have uh, that, that are within your parameters of life. But when you infringe on that baby's right, that's where you're then. And that's really all I wanted to say. I think it's great that this country, maybe we're going to have a reawakening, maybe a, a, a spiritual revival in this country. We need it. I think the, the, it seems to me like our, we're almost dead inside as Americans as a nation. Um, we don't seem to be very. Well, we're, we're not, we're not feeling any pain. We're not feeling any personal pain. Aaron's our problem. You know, when well, you feel, not, you when know, you feel pain, you do something about it. You know, if you're, you know, if you're broke, you go look for a second job. You know, if you're, hurt you uh you know you medicate yourself or whatever but uh we're just right. you know I mean, we're, we're going from paycheck to paycheck and we're we're making it okay i guess uh you know it, it well, would be nice if doing, it was better but it isn't we're doing gangbusters our poor mm-hmm. in this country are yeah among the richest people in the world mm-hmm. our, our poor have a higher living standard than every other poor people in the world except for canadians yeah, but that's only because they're gonna live with shame. Only Canadians, yeah. But, those Canadians, yeah. They talk talk about the bottom of your heel. Yeah, you right. right now. But we're at the top of the that's, foot. That's really all I wanted to say, man. Um, this is a good thing. I, you know, I really hope that we do have another spiritual awakening in this country, a revival. You know, there was yeah. a time when California was mostly Christian and and very right white or right wing, and um, th- another good thing about. The abortion bills, if it does go back to the states, all these Columbus, Christopher Columbus esque Californians that migrated here and want to enslave us with their taxation, all those people might move back to California so they can slaughter their children. I don't know, but it sounds mm-hmm. like a good thing. Yeah, they'll all they'll all be in, they'll all be you know they'll, they'll be where they want to be. So, <laughs> right. All, all right. right, thanks, Aaron. Appreciate the call. Thanks for listening. We got to take a break. We'll be right back with a bunch of local stuff for you guys right here. Six minutes for the top of the hour. It's Friday, May 17th, 2019, 46 degrees outside. And uh, you're on the uh, KMMS Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane. And, uh, well, uh, I don't know, boy, the uh, trade war thing uh, uh, keeps raising its ugly head. And uh, in other news... Uh, A U.S. House panel approved a spending bill that includes a significant increase in the amount of money allocated to the Land and Water Conservation Fund, a popular program that's been used for conservation projects all over the country. But Montana's two senators are saying the panel's increase isn't enough. The uh, House Budget Subcommittee advanced an Interior Department spending bill this week that included $523.9 million for the uh, uh, land, water, and conservation, about $85 million more than last year's allocation. It's the highest level of funding in more than a decade and a half. Uh, Montana Republican Greg Gianforti called the proposal very promising, but Montana's two senators 
have been pushing for a maximum level of funding of $900 million, uh, and uh, both asked for more. So, <laughs> well, well, we we got, uh, well, I, I guess it's a good thing if you got both senators uh, side by side going after this. So I don't know. <laughs> we'll find well, more. <clears throat> called bringing home the bacon, baby. Uh, apparently that's uh, that's what it is. And it's an election year, so let's uh, bring it on. Let's bring it on home, uh, and we'll see what happens here. So I don't know. But uh, anyway, it's uh, in other news, the uh, the state failed to make a reasonable effort to reunite a woman and son who was taken away from her after he was born with methamphetamine in his system. Uh, the Montana court, uh, Supreme Court ruled. Uh, the justices unanimously overturned the July 2018 termination of the mother's parental rights and ordered the Division of Child and Family Services to work to unite the woman with her son, who has lived with foster parents in Billings uh, since uh, his birth uh, in uh, 2016. We understand the child has been in the foster uh, placement for over two years and is apparently thriving, and there's no guarantee mother's substance abuse disorder will remain in remission. But uh, there are times, however, when the court must recognize the parent has not received what the law guarantees before her rights may be terminated. So, And the, they claim this is such a case, so... I don't know, boy. I really have mixed feelings about that. You know, Shane returning the. I mean, the kids. Kids been there for what three years in the in the home. Uh, you know, he's grown up with the. It's the only family he really knows, and uh, you know, and foster foster homes aren't ideal. Obviously, we hear all kinds of horror stories about foster homes. So you know, is this a good one or a bad one or? Uh, but yet, when you look at the mom using meth, uh, that that revis, reviticism sometimes uh, I don't know, pretty tough. Well, it is, and it you know, family services across your country is one of those issues where government has stepped into the home, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, it's again a federal program that was started in Washington and then it expanded to the states, and it's one of these issues that you 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 know. It, it's the greater good. That's what they tell us. But, yeah. you know, for for all the greater good they claim, every bad mm-hmm. story is not a good one. So they, they don't have a good record. Yeah. It should be per- it should be perfect for it to uh, be as influ- influential as it is. But uh, we try to be we try to do the best we can. There you are. In, in, in our great, you know, country clubs we live in. <laughs> Let's go to the phones. Five two two talk is the number. <laughs> Call you on the air. What's your name? What's going on? Tom, I forgot this part. I have to tell you this part, too. Um, the heartland's flooded. Nebraska was under six feet of water not long ago. Yep. Um, well, they still are. Yeah. 62 yeah. weeks. So, and they still are. And guess what? We still got 20 feet of snow in the mountains. Mm-hmm. So if ever there was a year we're going to put tariffs on China, this is the year to do it. Yeah. This is the time. Because the farmers, they ain't, gonna, they ain't got no crops anyway. Yeah, they, so, they, they can't get in the field, that's for sure. No, so, yeah. so, I mean, if they don't have any crops to, mm. why, are they, why are they whining? Oh, God, how are we going to sell our crops? You don't have any. Yeah. You know, and then like last year when he put the tariffs on, he put the tariffs on the crop. The crops were still in the field. Mm-hmm. And the farmers were, and I don't know how all that works, but, I mean, they hadn't even harvested the stuff yet, and everybody was complaining about it. Yeah. You know, didn't give it a chance to work. Come on, man, we're Americans. Well, they were afraid you know, the we, price would drop precipitously and it didn't because they still needed the crop so they paid what the going rate was because it's a commodity it's a world market commodity right. priced accordingly and aluminum and steel are up right they're not down are they no yeah well uh aluminum they're, is they're, uh, they're, yeah give them yeah, the they're, price they're, machine yeah, yeah they're, they're basically they're they're basically flat i mean uh let me get here real quick uh, industrial 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 here we are yeah, uh, where aluminum's at eighteen one thousand eight hundred sixty up five dollars today, but it's down eighteen percent for the year. And steel is at four thousand one ninety six up forty seven dollars today, but it's only up two point three percent for the year. So I mean, there, there's you know all these you know prognosticators of doom and gloom because of tariffs. They mm-hmm. not really been right. They haven't been right. All right, man. But people read these Facebook memes and they get just. Yeah. Yeah, they go nuts. Stop doing that. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. Nuts. Soybeans right, are right. at eight. eight soybeans are at eight thirty-seven. That's at the highest price they've ever been in history. I mean, you know. 
So what are you yeah, what are they complaining about? Quit complaining. All right. Go, guys. <laughs> All right, thanks for the call. All right, we got to duck out here, pay a couple bills. Uh, top of the hour, Jennifer Bordy will join us at eight o'clock. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, well, probably the Alabama abortion law and uh, Supreme Court and what'll happen there. I don't know. We'll see what she has on her plate coming up. So. Don't go anywhere. Hey, uh, when we come back, there are at least five things you need to know. So we're going to talk about those when you come back. So stay tuned. Good morning, everyone. Six minutes after the hour of 7 o'clock. It's Friday, May 17th, 2019. 46 degrees outside. Shane Matavin, my co-host, Half Man, Half Amazing, on the line in Vancouver. And Tom Eagle off your morning mayor on duty in uh, beautiful downtown Bozeman, Montana here. And, uh, well, Shane, uh, five things you need to know. Uh, during his interview with special counsel uh, Robert Mueller's office, uh, national or former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn told investigators that people with ties to the Trump administration and Congress contacted him in an attempt to interfere with the Russian investigation. And uh, Mueller wrote this in a newly redacted uh, court papers released Thursday. The message could have affected both his willingness to cooperate and the completeness of that cooperation, Mueller said, adding that in some instances his office was unaware of the outreach until being alerted to it by the defendant. Flynn provided a recording of one of the voicemails he received. The filing said, and in uh, December of 2017, uh, Flynn uh, pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI about his conversation with Russia's ambassador. So... Well, this burns my opportunity to to walk a dog because I wish I had a dog whistle. This is a terrible dog whistle. I mean, <laughs> of course, of course, Congress got in touch with him. They, they there were three committees investigating it as well as Mueller. Yeah. So of course they're going to want to talk to him. So you know, it's just bad news to make it make that reference. I mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. there were two House committees and a Senate committee, and uh, you know, the Senate committee still uh, there was actually two Senate committees. One's already completed its report, and the other two House committees completed theirs and said there was no you know collusion and uh, you know there's a senate committee trying to finish their up their investigation so yeah this, this is the dog whistle from the media trying to spark this whole thing again yeah you know well, crazy game there you are well in other news on friday taiwan's legislature became the first in asia to provide legal sex same-sex marriage the country's constitutional court ruled in a may 2017 that prohibiting same-sex marriage violated Taiwan's constitution and lawmakers had until May 24 to legalize such unions. The uh, legislature uh, considered three bills, and they approved the most progressive one, creating a new class of marriage that confers full legal rights in areas including taxes, insurance, child custody. It also gives same-sex couples limited adoption rights, and conservative lawmakers had wanted to allow same-sex unions or same-sex family relationships. So, well, uh, and this is interesting too because Taiwan, you know, it's, it's not an independent country as we yeah. know, but mm-hmm. it does have a seat in the United Nations. However, uh, the Kuomintang left China, went to Taiwan, as we've talked before, and very religious sect of China. So, you know, the interesting thing about Taiwan is very religious, free religion is practiced in Taiwan. And uh, here you go. Uh, you know, another area of free religion in the world recognizes this right. And uh, and the 21st century keeps moving on, doesn't it? Yep. Well, it, it's really interesting because it is in Asia. And it'll be interesting to see what uh, if other Asian uh, countries follow suit or not. Um, I, I think most countries in the, in the world, uh, particularly Middle Eastern countries, uh, would would not tolerate uh, same sex marriage or gays nope. or lesbian okay. or any of the other uh, things here. They, uh, as uh, um, oh, the uh, the little guy from uh, Iran, uh, admitted John, uh, yes. said at Columbia University, we don't have this uh, <laughs> this thing in, in Iran, this gay no. thing you have. Yeah, we don't the have Quran. this phenomenon in our country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the Quran's very specific about that and abortion. You know? Yeah, right. We Not don't have. Me. Yeah, we don't do either of those things. So uh, yeah. we're we're way ahead of you in that in that regard. That's so. right. <laughs> 
Well, yesterday, uh, President Trump revealed his new uh, proposal to revamp parts of the country's immigration system, according to, uh, uh, well, uh, what we saw on TV, at least. Uh, He's seeking to offer more opportunities for immigrants with certain skills or job offers who are proficient in English, English, uh, which I'm not, and pass a civics test. Uh, Trump unveiled the plan, which was developed by his son-in-law and senior advisor, Jared Kushner. At a ceremony in the Rose Garden, the proposal cuts back on family-based immigration and calls for construction on Trump's long-proposed southern uh, border wall, but does not address the uh, legal status of the Deferred Action of Childhood Arrivals, or DACA, uh, recipients. And Trump, uh, Trump, (laughs) Trump... suggested he, he not believe the uh, plan could become law in the near future and said we will get it approved immediately after the election. So he's well, looking ahead is, to being reelected, I guess. Well, and, and, and it's, it's, you know, it's policy, number one. Number two, it's another box he puts the Congress in because mm-hmm. if they don't do anything about changing these laws between now and Election Day, He's gonna he's gonna pound them about the fact they don't they, they won't solve the problem they won't yeah. do anything mm-hmm. and he's tried to propose it Lindsey Graham from the Senate as you know mm-hmm. which which is a reverse place because most legislation starts in the House but you know he came out with his plan this week so now the Democrats have to respond and you know instead mm-hmm. of coming up with a plan all they do is attack both Trump and uh, Graham's plans which mm-hmm. bad politics for the Democrats bad yeah. politics well. You know, when you got a hundred thousand people a month coming, uh, you know, to the border, uh, you know, there's got to be something done, and and you know, Congress is just sitting on its hands uh, because they they don't want that wall, but they know if they pass anything, that wall is going to be in there somewhere, or there's going to be That's some right. money somewhere for that wall, and you know, they just can't let Trump have a win, so why not keep the borders open, let a hundred thousand a month flow in here, and uh, you know, I think what I hear yesterday, they're in Florida, they're sending them to Dade County and somewhere else, 500 a day or something like that. And what, turning them loose uh, with a court date in their pocket <laughs> that they'll never show up for? And, uh, well, and it, as, I've, as I've said before, because we've talked about the Mexican-American War, there were troops on the border with Mexico uh, from 1845 to 1945, folks. There were troops on the border protecting it. And uh, because of World War II in the end, they, they withdrew them. But number two, because of the Mexican-American War we discussed, you know, Mexico lost 55 percent of its land to the United States. Mm-hmm. So yeah. th- that's why the Mexicans aren't doing anything about this. They want all that part of the United States back. <laughs> well, I'd give them California. I'd give them all of California if they want that back. You know, I don't yeah, know about Texas, go. but you know, <laughs> they, could have, they could have California if they want it back. Yeah, probably the southern half at least, right? Why not? Yeah. You want the Silicon Valley back for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you want that far back. So, yeah, we'll have to move that up to Seattle, I guess, or wherever. Yeah. Well, uh, but yeah, the uh, immigration here has just become a something that the Democrats are just don't know what to do with. You know, I mean, they're. They're not even coming up with a plan. At least uh, Trump's coming up with some kind of a plan, like it or not. And I, I tend to agree a little bit that, uh, you know, we want people here who can prosper and, you know, come with skills and are able to speak the language if they can and do other things uh, to uh, make a living here, pay taxes and be a good citizen and all that, you know, if they, yeah, want, well. if, if they want to be here. But and, and the thing is, is that the Democrats are getting hammered with the saying that came up against, uh, you know, one of uh, uh, Obama's secretary of state. And that was, is, you know, the Democrats were, you know, they were for it before they were against it. You yeah, know, like right, that's, yeah. it's, it's such a contradiction. In yeah, I was going to say there was uh, some twenty five billion in one bill for a wall uh, under Obama, I think it didn't pass. But uh you know why is that? Why is it, why was that a good idea then when there wasn't a hundred thousand a month at the border? But now that there are, it's not a good idea. So that's right. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah crazy gate, baby. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Plus, well, there's a bunch of other stuff in here as well that uh, you know it's not just the wall. I mean, there's uh, there's electronic surveillance. There's more guards. There's more judges to uh, right. do the asylum thing uh, that are included in here, and um, I don't know. So, 
Well, uh, I, think, I, I think the biggest one is what uh, Senator Graham suggested, and that is being able to hold people for 100 days. You know, that they yeah. come up here. Mm -hmm. that, that would deter people for sure. You yeah. Know what I mean, well, we got the uh, 20 days for the families, I think. You separate yeah. the kids, but no longer than 20 days. So, but uh, from our text line, 478 8298, uh, they should staple a green card to every <laughs> decorate <laughs> given, to a, given to a foreign student. Or a doctorate, I guess, is what he's what he means. They should staple a green card to every doc, uh, doctorate, doctorate. Well, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> whatever. You know, Trump, Trump's I, big argument is all these people come to the U.S. to get educated in you know in uh, universities, and then they go home. But to a certain mm -hmm. degree, that's important too because the developing world needs to grow and evolve, and mm -hmm. and it's happening. And uh, you know, but mm -hmm. it is a important thing that maybe those people will stay. The problem that you have in the country, like most Western countries, is the fertility and birth rates. And, you know, yeah. these demographics mm -hmm. are not good. Yeah. Well, the other thing is that oftentimes uh, they find good employment here and they don't go back to their country and uh, take yeah. their skill and their education back with them to uh, educate others and uh, make their country better. So, uh, That's right. yeah. you know, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, one of those uh, one of those bad things. So. Uh, let's see. Dump all the fake refugees in sanctuary, sanctuary city, <laughs> sanctuary state, California. All yeah. right, <laughs> we, we could do that. Well, Trump wanted to do that, and they said, "Whoa, wait a minute! Oh no, I don't think that's right." So we got to take a quick break. <laughs> we'll be right back right after these important words. Twenty minutes after the hour of uh, seven a.m. It's Friday, May seventeenth, twenty nineteen. Uh, the morning uh, soapbox with Tom and Chain. Callers on the line, so caller, take it away. You are on the air. What's going on? This is the old man. Yeah. Well, you're talking about immigration, and I got. Mm -hmm. a, I found out a little bit of something that I didn't know, and I don't think anybody else knows. My boy, Stephen. He married a Russian girl here about a month ago, and her name is Marina, and she's uh, she's a young, beautiful woman. God, she's pretty. But anyway, she was telling me what it took it's taken to become an American citizen, and she told me that uh, when she first came here to get her green card, it cost her a thousand dollars for the green card. And then after a while, when she had to get the second one to renew it, it was seven. It was eight hundred and some dollars. And now that she's a, a becoming an American citizen, she applied for a, the citizenship papers and stuff. It was seven hundred and fifty dollars for that. And then when she gets, and then she has to learn to be able to understand the federal constitution and what it says. And then she's got to be able to speak good English. Now what? The thing is that bothers the hell out of me is these Democrats are allowing all these Mexicans to come in. And Marina, she really bitched about that. She says, I had to do this and do that, and they're coming in free, free of charge, and we're paying for it. And she says, that's not fair, and it isn't fair. And so I'm wondering, what in the hell are we going to do? When Trump gets that border wall finished, Maybe that's going to help, and maybe it'll stop them. I heard that they float cars across the river, Tom and Shane. They float them across and drive them out on the other side. That is the damnedest thing I ever – I've seen that on the news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And? Yeah. Ain't that something? <laughs> Ain't that something? You take a damn car. I don't know what they do, put balloons on it or some damn thing, and float it across the river and drive up the other side with a load of drugs and everything. They had that right on there. But that isn't fair, what our government are, is doing. Uh, and Trump's trying to stop it, and the Democrats don't seem to understand that it's not fair to the people that came here the right way, applied for, for immigration, you know, and did everything right, and then have this happen. So what do you think they think? So I thought I'd bring that up this morning. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I think it was a damn shame. I don't know what the hell's the matter with these Democrats. You know, I just, you know, like I said, it's a political civil war. I don't know what we're going to do. It seems like every day it gets worse. 
I don't know. I think they should go out behind the Capitol building there and just beat the hell out of each other and then go back in and maybe they get something done. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not a Democrat. I'm a Republican. I vote both ways. <laughs> there you are. You know, I split the ticket. Tom, what the hell do you think about that? Well, that? Uh, well, I, uh, I have, I, I don't know that I've ever voted a straight ticket in my life because I local, local politics. Uh, I know the people. Yep. You know, living mm -hmm. here as long as I have. Right. And you know, not everybody is a is a wacko left or a wacko right person. That's right. Know? I mean, mm -hmm. they, that's right. They they you can talk to them. You know, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> reasonably, you can have a intelligent conversation and. And perhaps yeah. sway them to your way of thinking. Now, I don't, I don't know about our current city commission, but <laughs> yeah, but 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 yeah, uh, you know, I one of the things that I've always always said is that all politics are local. What we what we do here in our state and our city and our county is probably going to have more effect on us than anything that happens in Washington D.C. Well, Ben, you said that there's something that bothers the hell out of me about that city commission. Mm -hmm. Why can't we have a city manager that came from Bozeman, Montana? Yeah. We got the, one of the best universities in the world here. And we've got some very well-educated people here that's born and raised and live here in, in Montana and Bozeman. Yeah. Why do we have to hire somebody? And I ain't discrediting her for, you know, mm -hmm. herself. Yeah. Yeah. Why do we have to hire somebody? Out of town and pay a hundred and some thousand dollars uh, for that, and then all the city commissioners in here, even Jeff and Jeff's my friend, is from somewhere else. Yeah, they don't know the first damn thing about Montana. I don't mm -hmm. think, and they don't know the first thing about the city. They 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 practiced their stuff in in other cities and brought their crap here, and they're doing the same thing. Here yeah. is they done there where mm -hmm. they came from. Well, that's uh, you know we've had that argument on on this station for years, yeah. Clint. That uh, I know it. You know, even our building codes. You know, they bring oh, they bring something from some other state that w just doesn't apply here, but that's it right. sounds good. So let's put it on there, and all of a sudden you got another five grand on a house that shouldn't be there. That's right. That's absolutely well. What they say is a lot, a lot. Now we went from immigration to a lot in the city of Bozeman. Mm -hmm. It's about a hundred grand, you oh, know, yeah. for a damn lot. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, we've had lots here as high as three hundred thousand, Clint. I mean, come on. Sounds <laughs> sounds like a lot to me. It's a lot. <laughs> it is. How in the hell are the service workers going to be able to afford to live in Bozeman, Montana, and yeah. and afford to go mm -hmm. and wait on people? You know, no. wait on the the upper class of people, and the upper class of people don't. I don't think they think about the servants that have yeah. to serve them. You know, I mean, like the waitresses and stuff like that, and you know, things that that people need. You know, and the people in the stores and sure. You know, I mm -hmm. mean, they gotta eat too and sleep and have and be enjoy life. And now they're a damn slave, and there's no place for them to live. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a terrible thing. They're mostly Democrats, and they're terrible tippers. Yeah. You know what I pay for a cup of coffee out here at the Corner Cafe? I pay a dollar, but I always leave a dollar tip to the waitress. Because you go for it. You're you damn it, right. Guy. All us guys do it. But, and there's another thing about the Corner Cafe. We've got it all figured out. All right. You know, all right. Uh, well, you have a great weekend, and say hello to all those guys there at the club. Yeah, tell yeah. them to, listen, well, tell tell them to listen to our show, Clint. <laughs> hey, you'd be surprised when I'm talking on the radio here. People come out there. Yeah? Yeah, they think we're nuts, but that's all right, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we buy their coffee. You know, I mean, it can't be well, That's it. They're just there for the coffee. and the. <laughs> well, we've had fun, and if as long as we can continue to have fun, a little bit of Oh, yeah. Stuff on the radio and stuff. You know, it's, yeah. it's a wonderful place to live, but I feel bad for the service workers. I really do. Yeah. And the people that's trying to live here. It's tough know. to live here. It really is. You know, it, it it's, is. A, it's oh. an expensive place. There's no question about that. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, boy, you got to have two or three roommates to yeah. make, make ends meet, I think. I know it. Know. I know. Well, it's the same way. I got a grandson down in South Dakota or North Dakota in the oil fields. Same way. Prices down there are higher in hell around. You know, there in Williston and that country, 
and they have to bunk together to hell. The rent there's eleven to fifteen hundred dollars a month, some mm-hmm. more. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And our granddaughter and her husband, they're moving the hell out of there. They're going to Texas, I guess. They they say they can't stand it anymore because of the rents and stuff. They own their home and stuff like that, and they're going to sell it and get the hell out of there. If I could get out of here, I think I'd go too. Yeah. You know, the taxes. Mm-hmm. My my son-in-law pays $6,000 a year in just taxes for the house he lives in. He's paying $500 a month. How about that? Yeah, there you are. You know? I mean, is that right? And he lives in a house there. He's down at Riverside, okay? Mm-hmm. And he's got a nice home and stuff like that. But that, that kind of tax is outrageous. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah. yeah. How many people can afford $500 a month for rent or taxes? Well, not very many, that's, that's for it, sure. See? That's what I'm telling you. It's not proportionate. And then forced annexation of the of the county of people in the trailer park there, forcing yep. them. Yep. I can, boy, I go on all day. But anyway, I know, it's going to be tough. It is. I'll see you guys. And all right. Have a nice day, guys. Thanks, man. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, we'll uh, pay some bills, and uh, we'll be back with more of the five things you need to know right after this. 24 minutes for the top of the hour. It is Friday, May 17, 2019, 47 degrees outside. Shame and Tom and Half Man Half Amazing on the line with me from Vancouver. Tom Eagle off your morning mayor in the house. And welcome to the KMMS Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane. From our uh, text line, uh, Shane, we got all kinds of things coming in here. Uh, let's see. Uh, thank goodness Clint is here to uh, tell us everything wrong <laughs> with every everyone in the country every morning. So, uh, let's see. The liberal Californians that moved here are doing us uh, what Cl- uh, Christopher Columbus did to the Aztec. They are tyrannical. We must revolt against them. And uh, Clint, uh, although drinks cheap coffee, he used to leave me a $2 bill every time he came in and had coffee when I waited tables in my youth. So good for him. When under the, when under the Obama administration, uh, tr- or when under the Obama administration did they try to pass a bill for a wall, what party made it uh, where uh, it did not go through or fail? Well, uh, that would be, uh, let's see, that would be the, uh, let me find it here because I had it a minute ago, that would be the, uh, come on, where is it? <laughs> it's the, uh, the Secure Fence Act. When was that, Shane? Uh, Fence Act is like seven years old. Basically. Yeah. Uh, shit, I just had it here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they're alluding to the Secure Fence Act, uh, a bill pushed by the Bush administration, provided $1.4 billion for 700 miles of fencing along the southern border. 2006, uh, Schumer, along with Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, who were uh, senators from Illinois, New York, uh, voted in favor of the bill. And um, Barack Obama said, uh, but if we think putting up a few miles of fence is by any means the whole answer to our immigration problems, uh, then I believe we're seriously kidding ourselves. Despite the criticism, Obama went on to support the bill, along with 25 other Democrats in the Senate and 138 in the House. And uh, some saw the Democrats' support for the fence as a begrudging political calculation. Uh, Republicans at the time were pushing a bill that would charge illegal immigrants as felons. And some Democrats might have seen the secure fence bill as the lesser of two evils. So, um, so yeah, that was the Secure Fence Act of uh, 2006. Yeah, they were for it before they were against it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's their idea. They're all for it. But <laughs> other than that, but... Uh, yeah, so we come along and we want $5 billion for, uh, what, 1,400 miles or something like that or more, but uh, not working. So what can I tell you? Well, what I can tell you is Father's Day is coming up, and Americans mm-hmm. will spend $24.5 billion for Father's Day. Mm. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> what a comparison. Well, not as much as mom, but that's okay. That's Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Keeping up with the five things that we need to know, Shane, uh, what do we got here? Let's see. 
Well, uh, Iran war. Uh, Bolton uh, Bolton thinks we should take him out, and uh, Trump's not so sure yet. So, uh, well, it, uh, it would be a big mistake, and here's why. Really yeah. important. Okay, so the population of Iran is 81 and a half million people. 75 percent of the population ha- have been were born after the revolution and when the Ayatollahs took over. Now they're in the street saying death to the Ayatollahs. So mm-hmm. Iran's got a problem with the price of chicken and eggs in Tehran. And gas. You know, they, and, and gas, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, their total forces in the military, 523,000 active members, uh, you know, a $20 billion budget. I don't think it's, you know, time yet. And uh, as the Quran says, you should read it because it's very interesting, some nice poetry. You know, if you have an enemy, do not do not fight your enemy until you're in a position to beat them yeah. militarily. So they don't want to they don't want to fight the United States. So, th- you know, th- this is uh, a bit of uh, bad propaganda on the part of the U.S. and particularly the, 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 the administration. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, like Trump said, he doesn't want a war with Iran, and, but he's yeah. got to keep them in check because that's all they understand. Yeah. Well, I. Yeah, I, I think Iran was kind of surprised that he sent an aircraft carrier and all this all this firepower over there just yes. to uh, just to prove a point, boys. If you want to mess with me, I, I'm happy to oblige. That's right. And, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, other presidents haven't done that. Other presidents haven't haven't called their bluff. Well, that's right. And you have mm-hmm. 12 carrier fleets, you know, in your Navy. There's uh, five in the Pacific and uh, there's, you know, four in the uh, Atlantic and and two in the Indian Ocean. I mean, you know, this is not somebody they got. You've got a big stick. Yeah. <laughs> well, and as I said before, you don't have to put boots on the ground in Iran. Uh, you got drones, you got missiles, you got everything else you can use. You got smart bombs. I mean, come on. Uh, you know, you, you you take out airports, you take out, uh, you know, right. uh, oil refineries or whatever, and uh, you're pretty well done. Yep, you got eighteen Moabs, mother of all bombs left. So yeah. this is this isn't even a hard call. So there yeah. you go. So well, uh President Trump is in a disagreement with his top officials over how to handle escalating tensions with Iran. In a Wednesday morning uh, situation room meeting, Trump told acting uh, defense secretary Patrick Shanahan that he does not want war with Iran. Then on Thursday, when asked if the U.S. is going to war with Iran, Trump said, I hope not. Uh, That comes in contrast to implications from Trump's hawkish uh, national security advisor, John Bolton. And it has Trump calling out to other advisors to complain about Bolton. And uh, the reported infighting uh, (laughs) follows reports of the administration reviewing a plan to send uh, 120,000 troops to the Middle East and uh, what uh, military officials characterize as credible threats to U.S. interests. And I'm not sure what those credible threats would be, but. Well, yeah, but with a budget of $715 billion, I would think the defense, you know, the Department of Defense has uh, uh, spent a fair amount of it on contingency plans for everywhere in the world. You know, mm-hmm. like they, they've got to be having, they got to have guys that think of everything that's possible, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> Well, from our text line, 478-8298, something you said the other day, uh, Shane, uh, talks uh, talks softly and carry a big stick, which is what Teddy Roosevelt said. Right. Yeah. All yeah, right, you, you got to be prepared, like the Boy Scouts marching song. There you go. we got to take a quick break. We'll be right back right after this. 14 minutes for the top of the hour. It is Friday, finally Friday, May 17, 2019, 47 degrees outside. I'm excited to be here. How about you, Shane? <laughs> it's Friday. It's Friday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, there was another thing I was talking about, a $25 billion for the wall. And uh, this uh, from uh, Bloomberg back in December 13th of 2018 that uh, Trump's best chance for border wall funding at the level he wants came in February 2018, where Republican Senator Mike Rounds teamed up with independent Senator uh, uh, Angus King on compromise immigration legislation, and it included $25 billion over a decade to build a wall along the southern border and a path to citizenship for so-called dreamers uh, who were brought to the U.S. Uh, illegally as children and also barred green card holders 
from sponsoring adult children for permanent residency and reor reoriented uh, enforcement priorities uh, to focus on criminals in the country illegally. Uh, Trump tarts the bill as a giant amnesty for narrowing the scope of deportations and complain that it didn't end diversity visas or stop chain migration, his uh, uh, derisive term for laws that allow American citizens to sponsor siblings and parents for green cards. So amid uh, fierce White House opposition and a veto threat from Trump, just eight Republican senators voted for the bill with the support from Democrats that got 54 votes. And uh, but that was short of the 60 needed to advance in the Senate. A separate immigration proposal backed by Trump got just 39 votes. So back in the day, they were willing to put up 25 billion, but they're with the uh, things attached to it. Trump said not a chance. So, well, and I, I, I want to remind people too, though, that at the time he, uh, you know, uh, took executive action about the Dreamers and. And offered up a million, 1.8 million, to become citizens, and uh, they were back negotiating to, 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 you know, to try and get that done. Yes, they were. The, vote, yeah. the vote, the vote didn't go well. And what mm-hmm. happened? A court, a federal court. Oh, the ninth, ninth district in California. Yeah. You know, but put slammed his executive order about uh, uh, the the DACA recipients, and so the Democrats walked away because they figured, mm-hmm. oh well, this is great. Now, now the courts have strung. Trump out to dry, and uh, we don't have to negotiate with him. So, you know, again, it's one of those things where you know the the uh, the legislative and executive branch are trying to negotiate something, and then the judicial branch steps in and interferes with it. So that's what really happened there. Yeah. So, all right, from our text line four seven eight eight two nine eight, get rid of Bolton and Kushner as uh, Isra- Israeli spied. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> Well, we should do the two-minute 401k uh, checkup on the market. The Dow's down yeah. 107. The S&P down 12. NASDAQ is down 27. The rest of the world is in a fling, red across the board in Europe and Asia. And uh, when we look at the commodities market, we see the price of oil having something probably to do with it. It's $63. It's up margin- moderately. $72 uh, Brent Russian oil and natural gas at 264 And gasoline across the country, average price, $2. Not bad for summer driving. Mm-hmm. And those 34 blends of gas across your country. Bond market still looks strong because money's coming home. So the... 10 years at 237 down nominally, and the 30 years down as well at 282. So, the one thing that's interesting today, folks, the euro is under 112 once again, trying to hold that line. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the pound sterling, 127. So, still in that 130 range, looking strong, even though Brexit hasn't been settled. Uh, the Canadian dollar is up a bit a bit today, but it's still at 135. What can I say? China, they're holding their line at 6.91 to mm-hmm. the dollar. But Mexico is in trouble, 19.1 uh, the U.S. dollar. So, you know, is it cheaper to go to Mexico or come to Canada? Your choice for the summer. There you are. From our text line, 478-8298, uh, now that Melania's family is here, Trump is against family immigration, so I guess it was... <laughs> He was for something before he was against it, too. Well, I believe Melania's family uh, came uh, or applied legally. That's uh, correct. They, they weren't just uh, they were just shoveled in the side door. Uh, no. They applied uh, cor- uh, for citizenship here and uh, for permanent status anyway, yes, uh, the legal way. Right. And um, whether they are or are yet, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, fi- rate, and 15 yeah. years ago before he had any ideas about the White House, too. Let's put that in there. Well, yeah. They, they, <laughs> yeah so <laughs> we, could, we could also add that as well, I guess. All right. We got to take another quick break. We'll be right back. Seven minutes before the top of the hour, it is Friday. Finally Friday. <laughs> May 17, 2019, 47 degrees outside. Caller waiting on the line. Uh, Caller, you are on the morning soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? Well, I'm pretty sure that Trump can afford to pay his outlaws' bills. You know, he can (laughs) provide them a house. (laughs) Well, sure. I think so. Yeah. And everything else. So, you know, it's not on the backs of the taxpayers like most of these other refugees. Well, that would be and true. I do feel yeah. sorry for them. What I think they ought to do is they ought to take all that tariff money 
and subsidize the farmer and then ship all that food down to South America that yeah. the, our subsidies pay for, and then we just feed them till yeah. they explode. There you Seriously. go. Seriously. That'll work. <laughs> yeah. They, you know, I don't blame a lot of them for wanting to be here. I mean, you when you're down there eating your dog. Yeah, I think know, I'd want to be here, too. <laughs> you kind of run out of options. Pretty much. So what we need to do is pay, take that tariff money, buy the, the food from the farmer, and then just ship it all down there. All right. <laughs> Have a good day. All right. Thanks for the call. All right. Uh, let's see, from our text line, 478-8298, uh, Bitcoin down uh, 7120, 7120. Yes. Uh, I did not realize that when we voted in the last election that we installed a dictator in the United States, how much influence does the Congress have with the Iran buildup or the tariffs? Well, if you want to remember back to Bush uh, building up against... Uh, uh, attacking Iran, uh, Iraq, um, didn't need Congress for that. Don't need a permission nope. slip from the UN or anybody else. Uh, the only thing the Congress has, uh, they have 90 days to uh, uh, put up the money, and they either do or they don't. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's kind of where it is. Uh, or the tariffs, uh, the president has the right to uh, do tariffs uh, if he wants to, and um uh, Congress, I don't think it has anything to say about it. Well, and just about the Bitcoin, <clears throat> you know, there's uh, four that we watch. Uh, uh, yeah, through or well, Bitcoin seventy one fifty two down seven hundred and twenty seven ten percent today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Ethereum is two thirty eight. It's down uh, twenty five, down ten percent as well. So, not holding in there. Those are <laughs> a fleeting thing of the past, I think. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> If you want to check on Bitcoin, uh, coinmarketcap.com, coinmarketcap.com, and uh, there's about 100, and, uh, 100 uh, currencies over there uh, that you can check out and um, where the price is and where they've gone. And, uh, yeah, they're pretty much red all the way down. Uh, the only one, uh, Camos, is uh, up 7.41%. Seven, uh, 7 um and uh, chain link is up 9.92 percent, and those are about the only ones that are up appreciably uh, worth even talking about. So, well, and they, mm -hmm. and that's uh, the top 100. There's 1,200 mm -hmm. of them. Oh yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a lot more than that. Yeah, we're just doing the top 100 over there at uh, CoinMarketWatch.com. So yeah, so there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's see. Continuing on with the five things we need to know, Shane. Oh, my gosh. Uh, let's see. Well, uh, famed architect I.M. Pi dies at 102. I don't know if that's five things we've got to know, but I do know one thing that we do need to talk about, and that is the SATs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're right. now, now we've got an additional uh, thing on there that uh, – Talk about uh, Lori Laughlin and uh, Facil Felicity Huffman. Uh, now the government has decided, hey, we're going to take over this. Uh, this uh, We're, we're going to move the needle based on where you were born or your household yeah. income or any of the other stuff. We don't care about your grades. We don't care about your, what you do on the test. You know, <laughs> even if you max the test, uh, you know, we're going to. We're going to take into account your income and, uh, you know, your family status, your address, where, what part of uh, the bad city you live in, all of that. And uh, I don't know where this all ends to where I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Well, you know, the thing about it is, is it was debuted in by uh, the college board. It was set up in yeah. 1926. Yeah, so <laughs> it's not like this hasn't been around for yeah. quite some time. I remember taking them. I did well mm -hmm. and got, uh, you know, got a scholarship out of it. But, yeah. you know, the, the bottom line is, is that it, it's it's a measure of your ability to be able to go to college. And that's the whole thing that's so important about it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if you're not at least got the basics to go or to move into college because of the SAT test, which give yeah. you that idea, you know, then, you know, it, it's one of these things that government wants to get away from because they want to get to this free college for everyone. Mm -hmm. that, that's, this, that's what this is about. Really? That's the, you know, that's the political side. Yeah. Well, and as we all know, not everyone belongs in college. 
Um, I, I, I think okay. what you're what you're going to have is you're going to have a rush on college campuses uh, if it's free. Mm-hmm. And you're going to you're going to keep uh, some seats filled that people should be in that aren't. Well, that's right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, and th- th- this is the whole issue that has to be dealt with because, you know, there's two million graduates every year from your universe or from your high high schools. Yeah. And so, th- th- you know, it's a lot of people and, you know, less than 40 percent go on to college mm-hmm. because they can't afford to or they don't feel that it's necessary. Yeah. Um, the, the problem is, is and I agree with this comment, uh, what's the point of a degree if it takes you 20 years to pay it off? That's true. Yeah. Makes no sense to me. Nope. Doesn't financially make sense to me either. All right. We got to pay some bills. Jennifer Bordy will be up next, and uh, we'll see what her thoughts are on the Alabama bill maybe and some other things or whatever she's got on her plate. So stay tuned for that coming up uh, right after the news at the top of the hour. All right, welcome back, everyone. It is six minutes after the hour of 8 o'clock. It's Friday, May 17, 2019, 47 degrees outside. No Jennifer Shane. So uh, she may be off today. Um, she wasn't sure if she was going to be here for one of the one of these days. So <laughs> Yeah, there you but, go. Uh, so we're going to persevere on from our text line, 478-8298. As for Trump the dictator, uh, how's that wall going? <laughs> well, the, uh, the uh, national security is still in the courts. It's still yep. running its way through the courts, but I think he's going to prevail with that. And uh, some of the pipelines. Well, pipelines have been approved. As far as I know, uh, there there are some court uh, things going on with that as well. But um, yeah, and state pi- courts. Yeah. yeah, pipelines have been approved. So uh, let's see. Uh, also, from our text line four seven eight eight two nine eight, talking about um, the uh, students and the uh, SATs, the diversity SATs. So they can discriminate against Asian students, yeah, because the Asian students will be aces and eights and uh, whatever. Uh, college will only be for moon crickets and setbacks. So there you are, <laughs> whatever those and, two and, things are. And trust babies. <laughs> and trust babies, yeah. Uh, let's see. Since the U.S. is an evil, racist country, we should let the refugees stay where they are and send them welfare checks, health insurance, SSI checks, and send them food like the one caller suggested. Oh, yes, let them vote, too, because why not? Well, I like that. Yeah, just leave them where they are and send them money and they can vote and everything else. They don't even have to come here. Uh, Trump doesn't uh, doesn't even make his own merchandise in the USA. Heck, he doesn't even marry America. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> All well, right. I see <laughs> That's pretty funny. Doesn't marry it, America. It, that is funny, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll give us uh, keep us up to date uh, with the text lines here from everybody. We appreciate that. Thanks for texting us. All views are welcome here, of course. So uh, bring, them, bring them on, you know. So, uh, yeah, I like that. Didn't even marry, marry American, so <laughs> you got to love it. Oh, well, let's see. Um, well, the other thing that we can, we can talk about, of course, is the uh, we're still going with the uh, Alabama, um, which will end up in court, I think. And we were talking about this yesterday as to, as to whether or not that's going to make it to the Supreme Court. Do you think... You know, my position is, and I think a lot of the pundits that I've listened to say that if it's struck down by a lower court and an appellate court also agrees, the Supreme Court probably won't waste their time hearing it. Or well, is it or is it such an important bill that they're going to hear it no matter what? Well, I, I my my view is twofold. Number one, they're going to pick a case that they, they're going to want to hear. They, they will. And the reason is they want to clarify the law that was established, you know, for Roe versus Wade with uh, Ginsburg. Mm-hmm. So the, at the end of the day, I think they'll send it back to the states to let them divide, decide it individually, which is where it should be in the first place, I think. Okay. Um, well, based on Roe v. Wade, which is pretty much settled law, does that— Yeah, it, 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 it is settled law, yeah. Yeah. Does that void the Alabama bill? 
Well, it, it does in the context of the the review by by them. You know, Missouri just passed a bill yeah. that's pretty extensive and probably will get to the to the Supreme Court because mm -hmm. it covers so many different variables. Yeah. And the the importance of what I'm I'm saying is constitutional lawyers and and people that are great far knowledgeable about this and I am feel that the original Roe versus Wade decision was bad law. That, that's what they mm -hmm. call it, bad law. Yeah. And uh, you can argue over you know, the reasons for it because of privacy, that it was adopted or whatever. I think it may be settled law, but they want to settle it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They mm -hmm. want it settled. Yeah. Like, you know, let, let, let's, you know, let's settle mm -hmm. this once and for all. And, and uh, the, 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 the difficult thing about it is, uh, you know, as we said yesterday, you know, the the left's argument about reproduction rights of women. Well, abortion is re isn't reproduction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's anti-reproduction. I was going to say, yeah, that's yeah. pretty so much true. You know, it, it, it's just a matter <laughs> of case. And, and with mm -hmm. science, and this is going to be the big thing, because you and I both have talked about this this last week. You mm -hmm. know, science now has affirmed that there is a living being. And, and the, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, analogy of, of slavery to abortion is now you know, pretty good argument. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, from our text line, four, seven, eight, eight, two, nine, eight. Uh, what Shane said, uh, this is a state's right rights issue. And I think it should be, I think yeah. it should be up to the states, how they want to, how they want to handle this. The, the difference between the Alabama law and the Missouri law is uh, Missouri has an exception for rape and incest where Alabama That's does good. not. Alabama is going with the notion that life begins at conception. That's the that's the definition they want the Supreme Court to make. And whether or not the Supreme Court will take that or whether they can argue that or not, um, you know, you could you could point to the other bills, uh, the other heartbeat heartbeat bills. There's about five or six of them, I think, going on right now that, uh, you know, if there's a heartbeat there, there's a human. Whether you're, you know, whether it's viable outside the womb or not is another question, but it is a human being if it's got a beating heart. I would, I would think most people would agree with that. Well, um, and, and it's a slippery slope to, uh, you know, science in, in that, uh, you know, the right for people to die. You know, mm -hmm. not, even if, that's where this becomes a really a big problem because uh, euthanasia is going to be the next knock at the door for the Supreme Court if if uh, science doesn't hold up the right of a child to you know in mm -hmm. the womb to live. Yeah. You know that that's that's where this is is scarily going for all of you out there that are old. Mm -hmm. Is you is euthanasia. Yeah. You know. And you know again that's a whole nother can of worms that you know how yeah. how how bad does pop or mom have to be before you pull the plug or. You know, take well, that's what I'm saying. You know, yeah. if, you, if you can use science to justify euthanasia, then you have to use science to justify abortion, mm -hmm. right? And that's this is the quagmire that you're getting your your you know, judicial system into because your you know your legislature your, your federal legislators won't deal with them. Mm -hmm. You know, they they don't want to deal with either of these issues. Yeah. Uh, from our text line, 478-8298, uh, under state diocese, uh, Roe versus Wade isn't settled law either because there are some states that have abortion at certain stages and some that do not. So, Yeah, and, and look at look at Missouri mm -hmm. uh, as, mm -hmm. a, as, as part of the conversation we just had. There's only one abortion clinic in all the state of Missouri yeah. left. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, it, it, it's, you know, it's, it's one of these situations— it's a moral issue. It's not a political one. Yeah. Well, and uh, you got uh, Bill de Blasio that wants to put more Planned Parenthoods in New York City. He's already aborting more black children than are being born there. And, you know, the black community is the one that's really suffering from this. And I, I, I guess they don't realize that, you know, you, you may be aborting a black senator, a black president, a black councilman, a black uh, chief of police, a black fireman, uh, you know, uh, musician, uh, yeah, artist, yeah, it goes on and sure. on. Sixty, you know, sixty percent of the abortions, you know, since Roe versus Wade, have been minority abortions mm -hmm. and uh, principally uh, African American. So it, it's, yeah. 
You know, it, I don't get it. I don't understand how the African Americans continue to support the Democratic Party with, you know, this issue and mm -hmm. and several others that, you know, in a lot of ways they're opposed to. Yeah. Well, on the one hand, they, you know, no problem, uh, no problem killing the infant. But on the other hand, if, uh, you know, if the father's not in the home and you have a kid, you get a little more money. You know, right. and I've never understood that. Why Why do you get more money if the father's not in the home? It seemed like if the father's in the home, that should be some kind of incentive to, you know, to uh, do something. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, it's pretty sad because eight years ago, I think it was, California had on their ballot, uh, you know, uh, an uh, anti-abortion issue. And the African-American vote in California passed that law. And then the night, it was challenged by the, uh, it, you know, the... Uh, Mm -hmm. American Civil Civil, Civil Liberties. Liberties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the Ninth Court in California said, "Oh mm -hmm. no, you can't have this law in California." I mean, and the people voted in favor of it. So, I know. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, this is the, it's going to go mm -hmm. back and forth. So we'll see where it ends up. But yeah. euthanasia is the next one, folks. That's where they're going with this. I believe it. Four seven eight eight two nine eight is our text number. Related to abortion, if Planned Parenthood can afford to donate fifty million to the DNC, why are my tax dollars to plan? Why why are my tax dollars going to Planned Parenthood? <laughs> I would agree with that. And uh, of course, uh, many uh, bills have been passed to try to limit uh, Planned Parenthood's uh, uh, amount of money they get. And I I would agree with that. I think, like a lot of other groups, uh, they should go out and. Um, you know, make their, uh, you know, get their own donations and do their own bake sales and cookie That's selling right. and uh, everything else that other nonprofits do. And the other thing we got to realize, I think there's only about 77,000 uh, Planned Parenthoods and there's something like 300,000 clinics, um, you oh, know, yeah. that'll provide the same or better services than the, uh, you know, than Planned Parenthood does. So. That's right. Let's take a phone call. 522-TALK is the number, 522-8255. Caller, you're on the Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? Hey, guys, it's Mayor. Hi, Mayor. I have a, I have a question. Um, after listening to that governor of was it Virginia. Virginia, yeah. And, mm -hmm. yeah, when he said, well, we'll let the baby rest comfortably and we'll have a discussion with the mom and dad. Right, yeah. Well, and if they decide that they don't want that baby, um, I want to know how they're going to uh, kill that baby. Is it uh, firing squad, uh, <laughs> lethal injection, um, electric chair, yeah. cutting off its head? Um, I mean, well, I, I just can't even believe that we're having this conversation. If, I mean, really, how are they going to then terminate that baby's mm -hmm. life? Um, that's murder. I don't care any way you cut it. That's murder. Yep. Um, if you're if you're outside the womb and you're breathing, uh, I, I would say that's murder. Yeah. yeah the, the question and, uh, the question to the parents, the mother and father, isn't you know do, do you want us to keep this baby alive? It is. Do you want this baby, or are we putting it up for adoption? That's the question. Well, yeah. and that be, was my you know, second point. Yeah. Why in this conversation do we never hear the word adoption? Exactly. Um, I was adopted. Thank you know if mm -hmm. I was if if my mother was doing the same choice today, I probably wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have a chance. You know what I mean? Yes. But she she gave me up. My um, bio my adoptive parents took me in. I was only four months old, I think, or three months when they adopted me. And um, I think, you know, why? Why aren't we talking about adoption? We used to talk about it all the time, you know, that there was a choice that these mothers, okay, you get pregnant, you don't want this baby, carry the baby to term. There's so many women out there that would love to take care of your baby. And well, a nine-month sacrifice yeah. is nothing compared to the, you know, the killing of a child and what that does mm -hmm. to you psychologically. Well, the adoption process has become such a bureaucratic nightmare. It takes years sometimes to do it, a lot of money. And, well, you know, and that's what has to change. Yeah, you know, no, it does have to change. I agree with you. I, I think if there was an alternative, uh, I think a lot of these uh, uh, women would 
uh, carry their babies to term and, uh, you know, uh, put them in the arms of a loving, waiting family. But there is the alternative. There still mm-hmm. is women and, mm-hmm. you know, couples, mm-hmm. you know, sure. setting out trying to get mm-hmm. the adoption process started. You know, it's not like, okay, well, we decide to have a, you know, we're going to adopt a baby and we'll, we'll get one tomorrow. You know, that, that sure. doesn't happen. But, you know, I mean, you start the process, you get, you know, lots. I mean, I adopted a child, so I know what the process is. I mean, that was quite a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you apply and, and you do, you know, you have social workers come to your house. You, you know, I mean, there's a background check. There's all kinds of things that they do. And it didn't, but it, he was, the child I adopted was, he was uh, 11 years old. So it's a lot easier to adopt an older child. It doesn't right. take as mm-hmm. long as, as a baby. Right. But it, it doesn't, it shouldn't matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, it's there's so many kids in foster care right now. I mean, that's mm-hmm. also another topic that probably should be delved into is the uh, boy. You know, being in foster care is not a is not a picnic. There's some really bad foster parents. There, there are, too, yeah. That's you know. we were talking about that earlier. That um, you know, this kid uh, in Billings, uh, they're trying to re uh, the Supreme Court wants to reunite him with his meth mother, uh, you know, and. He's been in this foster home for three years. Whether it's a loving home or not, I don't know. But it seems seems like that's the only home he's ever known. So, mm-hmm. what, what do you do? You know. So, well, we no. you know back in the day we also mm-hmm. took in a, a foster girl, and sure. she, I mean, her story was pretty horrendous. And mm-hmm. you know, when they found her, she was nine months old. At nine months old, had had been you know laying in a crib the whole time, never picked up. Right, you know. Yeah. And so then, fast forward, they take her out, put her in foster care, and then when she's 18 months old, they put her back in the family, oh, yeah. which mm. should never have happened. So yeah. they ended up having to pull her out again. But in the process, in the in the meantime of all of that, I mean, she, I mean, that story mm. even got worse, right? You yeah. know. Mm-hmm. And by the time we brought her into our home, I mean, she was, she was so damaged. It's you know, it just breaks my heart. Yeah. Um, what really goes on with these kids. And mm-hmm. when we focus on all this other stuff, we we tend to lose focus on the kids that have no voice, no, obviously no rights, you know. Yeah. Uh, they're just put <laughs> wherever, you know, housed or, you yeah. know, warehoused is what I'd like to call it. I mean, I think there's some great foster parents out there, but there's a lot that aren't. All right. And, um, gotta, gotta go. Yeah, thanks, guys. All right. Hey, thanks for thanks for your input. Thanks for the yeah. Thanks for the information. We appreciate it very much. Thanks. All right, we'll be right back with more after this. Okay. All right, I am back, and twenty five minutes after the hour, it's Friday, May seventeenth, twenty nineteen, forty seven degrees outside. Shane and Tom on the line with me. We have a caller waiting. Caller, you're on the air. What's going on? Well, to answer, Mayor, the uh, yeah. If you listen to the Virginia governor carefully, he's a physician. It was very slippery what he said. He said, we'll keep the baby comfortable, and then the baby dies, they'll bring it back to life. And then they'll have a conference between the mother and the physician. They want to keep the law out of it. Mm -hmm. And then they put him in the van and use him. A live baby's worth a lot more as an organ donor than a dead baby. Yeah. They make big money as organ donors. And they kill them on the day of their birth for organ donors. Well, we've heard some of that from Planned Parenthood. Uh, the undercover video and everything was showing they were selling, uh, you know, various body parts. Oh, it's and, a uh, huge, it's a huge yeah, underground yeah, business. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it is, yeah. But that... that that governor of Virginia is a physician. He knows mm. all about it. And they, they keep the baby comfortable. Oh, yeah. 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 He knows. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks for the call. Okay. <laughs> well, Tom, there, yeah. there, there, mm-hmm. used to be, there used to be a place where homeless children went. That's true. Yeah, they went to orphanages or they went to wherever, you know. They, and they were called orphanages. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and it, you know, when you look at it, the, the, the history of orphanages and, and what they provided for children, and it's interesting because you, the, the position of orphanages now in your country has been supplemented with abortion. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, yeah. It has. Mm-hmm. 
and, and that that's sort of sad to me. I mean, it's it's really regretful that that's you know, yeah, basic, basically where you're, where you're at, right? From our text line four seven eight eight two nine eight, black males are enslaving their mates and children by not staying in the home and caring for them. Uh, they're placed in China where babies can be dropped off in a box in a wall of a facility uh, that have caregivers on hand, uh, no questions asked. Exactly. As soon as the Mexicans set uh, f- uh, foot on American soil, they get constitutional rights, but American baby that makes it out of the womb onto American soil doesn't have, just doesn't make sense. Yeah. It, yeah, it, it is. A, it's a, it's an amazing change in Mm -hmm. in our culture in the last you know 50 years right yeah uh black babies from white mothers are being aborted well probably a certain percentage uh i don't know what percentage that is but i i don't know that it's uh, a lot but Mm -hmm. perhaps i don't know anyway well the state is trying to decide what to do about this because once again it's something they don't want to legislate and they don't Mm -hmm. want to make a determination on themselves so Mm -hmm. it's uh it's one of the things now i had an epiphany okay i don't i don't want to segue but i got an epiphany Mm -hmm. so we were watching beto o'rourke getting his hair cut right yeah and then he went on the view and he apologized you know for his white privilege well in the case of uh, beto o'rourke it's not white privilege it's white privilege yeah. <laughs> you know his wife is the daughter of a, a real estate developer and i was gonna say she's she's got some bucks uh yeah from what her I father understand. Made 500 yeah. million dollars so yeah <laughs> he, he he doesn't suffer under white privilege he suffers under wife privilege <laughs> <laughs> well what can i tell you <laughs> Let's see. Uh, also from our uh, uh, text line, uh, I would love a definition of an unplanned pregnancy, please. <laughs> yes. uh, amazing how the libs want to legislate drugs and outlaw guns. So there you are. Yeah. All right. We got to take a break here at the bottom of the hour. Uh, you'll be treated to yet another um, probably repeat, but not the one you just heard. It'll <laughs> probably be a different repeat. So live with it. Till, till I can figure out what the hell is going on with it. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back with more stuff right after this. Hang on. 23 minutes for the top of the hour. It's Friday, May 17, 2019. Welcome to the KMMS uh, Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane. And uh, Shane, our poll question of the day, war with Iran. War with Iran. And... Uh, uh, for at the moment, uh, yes, war with Iran is leading 55% to 44%. Wow. Amazing. Yep. So there you it are. Is. So yeah, we're ready to, is. we're ready to, we're ready to go. <laughs> it, it appears that way. I mean, it's am- amazing how the media can captivate people and direct them, isn't it? It, it really is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's no, absolutely no benefit your country or any country to go to war. But I have to tell you that uh, a lot of corporate leaders and government people in Europe are wiping their brow because the head of uh, Iran last week said if the Europeans don't help them get around the sanctions uh, that the U.S. have because they pulled out of their deal, Mm -hmm. that they'll start start up their uh, nuclear program again. And of course, if they do that, they're breaking the deal, and now the Europeans have a way out. <laughs> they got well, they, they do. They, <laughs> well, so they're all waving their uh, going, thanks, uh, Iran. You, you got us out of that box. <laughs> well, aren't the uh, people who are still in it, aren't they supposed to exercise uh, sanctions and everything else, too? Well, uh, Just because yeah, we're not there doesn't mean they can't, they, can't ex- they can't honor the agreement. That's right. Well, you know, your president's made it clear. You want to do business with us or with Iran? There yep, you go. That's it. And that's the way it should be. So yeah, let's, be. let's take a phone call. 522-TALK is the number. Caller, you are on the air. What's up? Well, good morning there, Tom. Hey, Jane. how you doing? I'm doing good. You know, on the, the abortion issue, it, if you in, you're in Alabama and you can't get an abortion, you can always go to another state. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't think the Supreme Court will get involved in this. I mean, and, and if you really want to be honest about it, I'd say if, even at the state level, vote on it. True. You know, they don't want that because um, the tide's turning on abortion. Well, I think it is. I think uh, particularly when, when 
you know, uh, particularly when we got to the late term abortion, where they're talking about killing babies outside the womb and, you know, killing them right before birth and all of that. We that, that gets that get yeah that's that gets people a little squeamish you know when it's when it's an unas, uh, unidentifiable unidentifiable group of cells then yeah or doesn't have a heartbeat or something like that we're a little more uh, well, tolerant. There's, there's many cases that it goes beyond that. I mean oh yeah you, you're not going to see adoption from CPS they they don't care they mm-hmm. they prefer to take your children and put put them in the hands of the state. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they, oh, you're homeschooling your kid? Uh-uh, bang. You're not vaccinating your kid? Bang, gone. And, and on and on. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's getting well, out it, of control. It, 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 look, the big deal is twofold. It's genocide because of the number that have, of abortions that have occurred since Roe versus Wade just in North America. And number two, science proves it's at conception. There is a living being in a woman at conception. And that's been their argument, you know, since Roe versus Wade, that there was no science to prove that, you know, it's a living being in a woman. Well, it's a symbiotic relationship. Of course it is. Yes, exactly. And I I agree 100 percent. And you talked about euthanasia coming. It's already here, believe me. And it's kind of like the abortion thing. Well, what are you doing for, for my grandmother while we're managing her pain? Yeah. Well, and that exactly. means that means morphine, and that leads to what? Multiple organ shutdown. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly what happens. I know, buddy. It's coming. They get they, now. They'll legalize it, though. Oh yeah. And for Shane, here's one for you. And I, I, I didn't have a chance to to go and look and verify this, but there was a little blip on the internet today. Bear stock is down fifty percent. Who stock? Bear. 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 Oh, bear stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's in trouble. It's in a free fall. Yeah. Yeah. Karma is real, folks. Sounds like it. (laughs) Eat it in the market. Yeah. It's the real deal. (laughs) You guys have a good day. All right. Hey, thanks, Pete. (laughs) Oh, and we should mention we're not here on Monday. Isn't that next Monday? A week from Monday? Yeah, that you know, like twenty seventh. Twenty seventh, we're not here. Yeah, give everyone a heads up. Yeah, we're here next Monday, but we're not here yeah. on twenty seventh. Right. <laughs> okay. Good. Just making sure. I thought <laughs> I'm looking at my calendar, and I said, "Did I miss a week somewhere? Or did we not have shows?" Hey, I'm stretching here. I'm, trying I'm stretching. To okay. It. All right. You're filling. All right. Good job. Well, you filled up right to where we need to take the break. So exactly. <laughs> We'll be back in exactly 90 seconds. 16 minutes for the top of the hour. It's Friday, May 17th, 2019. Uh, Shame and Tobin, half man, half amazing on the line. Tom Eagle off your morning mayor. And from our text line, uh, 478 War with Iran? No. <laughs> when it comes to abortion, the males have no right except the um, mandate to pay support. Uh, Heart of the Valley has a beautiful facility and heavily funded to save animals from euthanasia. Never seen cute little boxes at grocery stores. Checkouts for saving babies. So Mm. there you go. There you go. Uh, Keep the baby comfortable until the doctor and Planned Parenthood can bully and shame the mother into letting them kill it. (laughs) I guess we'll have to go there then. Yeah. All right, let's take a phone call. 522-TALK is the number, 522-8255. Call you on the air. What's going on? Yeah, um, so the subject of abortion, uh, you know, what's the ultimate uh, goal in life to uh, carry on the next generation as from, like, Alaska, where I'm from? We have a saying, spawn and die because of the fish swimming up the rivers. Right. Mm-hmm. But what about so what about the weirdo that's too, too odd out there that, that – He's too odd to find some girl to have kids, but he knows he has to carry on the next generation. So in his mindset, he's like, okay, well, all I got to do is go rape some girl, and I'll carry on the next generation. Now, what I can't agree with and I have a hard time agreeing with is how can some girl be forced to have a guy, a guy's kid by somebody that she, did, she was forced to and doesn't want to have a kid with? I, I can't mm-hmm. agree with that. I have a hard time agreeing with that, that a girl should be forced to have a baby by someone that forced her to have a, his kid. 
doesn't make sense, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd agree, so, I'd agree I with know. that. I think that's why there's always been an exception for rape or incest or things like that. Um, you know, in, in most cases, uh, there has been. You know, but the, the past, Al- but yeah. Yeah, but the Alabama bill. Doesn't have that. Yeah, it doesn't have that. that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They, so I, I don't understand that part of it. Um, well, the that's... what they want to do is they want to go to the Supreme Court and claim that uh, life begins with conception, not with heartbeat, not with anything else. So uh, what they're saying is that life is life, whether it came from rape, incest, or whatever. Now, I'm, I'm kind of in your camp that, um, you know, obviously. You yeah. Yeah, you obviously some other. Have. Yeah. Yeah, obviously I mean, some mothers have had uh, uh, children as a result of rape, and they've loved them, sure. and they've been great. And, you know, other people uh, have been, uh, well, we had a lady on the other day, Shane, that uh, was talking about uh, why her mother, uh, you know, it was a long time before her mother admitted that she was a product of rape, and she wasn't treated well, but had a beautiful life, uh, knowing that her mother did love her, and... Um, you know, but yeah, it was, it could go either was, way. You know, yeah, it, I mean. yeah, it depends on the individual circumstance, I believe. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah. Thanks for the call. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't quote President Clinton very often, but you know, he did say that uh, abortion should be allowable and provided, but not common. Right. Yeah. And should be uh, rare. You know, this, should be rare. I think yeah, it should be rare. Yeah. Yeah, a, a lo- yeah that's right. Mm-hmm. Allowable, uh, provided, but rare. Anyway, you know, it's it's an ongoing moral issue, and you know, and now government has stepped in to legislate morality, and this is this is why it's become such an issue be in your country, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, it's uh, one of these things that has a long history, and and mm-hmm. it has always been an issue for people to have to try and deal with. So, it's a personal choice. It is. Let's take another call. Five two two talk is the number. Call you on the air. What's up? Good morning. It's Rabbi Chaim. How are you, Tom? Rabbi, how are you? Good to hear from you. I, I just wanted to thank you. I, I wanted to chime in on this conversation about abortion because sure. what we have going on, what we have going on in this country, and I'm obviously a follower of the Old Testament, and yet I find it totally insane that on the one hand you have places like New York, my original home home state, that is supporting you know basically late term abortions up until after birth, and then you have Alabama who doesn't even take into consideration situations like rape and incest, um, where even according to Jewish law, which is the strictest of law, there would be room for potential abortions under those circumstances. We've lost our sense of balance in this country, and more importantly, we've, we've forgotten the real issue here. The issue here is not abortion. Why aren't we asking the question, why are there so many so-called unwanted pregnancies? Right? I've often said that you don't get pregnant by mistake. I've never met anyone except for a case of rape, God forbid, 99.9% of, of pregnancies don't happen by mistake. They happen because people are being promiscuous, promiscuous um, premarital relationships that, are, that shouldn't be happening. Um, and so when we don't deal with the core issue, the real ethical and moral issue um, is not the after effects of the, of the abortion versus pregnancy versus adoption on a father of five adopted kids. But nevertheless, we're not dealing with the real issue, which is, why is there so much promiscuity? And why aren't we talking about that? Why are we passing out uh, condoms in public schools instead of teaching kids that it's probably healthier and better and more spiritual and, and moral to wait until you're married to have that kind of relationship? And so until we start dealing with the core issue, we're going to continue having this conversation until I'm 120 years old. We'll be talking about Roe v. Wade, abortion, you know, pro-life, mm-hmm. pro-choice, pro-this, pro-that. Feeling these are all symptoms of a bigger issue that no one's ready to tackle because it's become the norm that just, you know, sleeping mm-hmm. around from the age of 15 is normal. And so let's be the yeah. ones to start the conversation about the real issue. And maybe, maybe even in our small community of Bozeman or the state of Montana, we'll start seeing a better result than just the cycle of the same conversation. Yeah. Thanks, Rabbi. Appreciate Have a wonderful weekend. Yeah, you too. Appreciate your thoughts. Thanks for calling. All right, we'll be right back after the Rush update and a couple other things. So here's Rush. Five minutes for the top of the hour. It's Friday, May 17, 2019, 48 degrees outside. Shane, Ta- Shane and Tomman, half man, half amazing on the line with me. Tommy Goloff, your morning mayor. And uh, from our text line, 478-8298. 
Uh, without uh, the incest exception, Alabama would lose half its population. So uh, I don't know about that. Uh, women have a choice to close their legs, and men have an option to close, keep zipped up too. So yeah. <laughs> to give them both of those. Uh, let's see. Carrying the ne- next ge- carrying on the next generation is uh, much more than impregnating a woman. Yet another miss. Uh, misconception that the sexual revolution, which started uh, this wholeness, uh, including gender dysphoria, the rabbi is right on. Keep it in your pants, America. Uh, let's see. Uh, call your congressman today and vote no on HB5, okay? Uh, euthanasia started when uh, Margaret Sanger brought Planned Parenthood to places where black people live. She and Democrats wanted to get rid of them, and I think that's been proven over time that that was part of her original idea i think Mm -hmm. so that's right let's take a phone call 522 talk is the number call you are on the morning soapbox with tom and shane what's up hey i know time is short tom i just wanted to follow up on rabbi's comments there sure about promiscuity Mm -hmm. um there's another confusing issue to me that he didn't bring up and that is you know abstinence is not taught in school and you had a texter, I believe, earlier in the day, say our tax dollars are used to fund Planned Parenthood. Then mm-hmm. they turn around and vote fifty million of those dollars to the DNC. Right. Yeah. And yet, statistically, Jewish people vote Democrat. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, that's been a problem for a long, long time. And I don't get it. The Jewish people are intelligent, wonderful people. They're, you know, well, particularly when you compare, uh, and I, I yeah. think, you know, but that's one thing I mean, even Barack Obama was so disrespectful. I was going to say, when you compare Jewish Obama, minister, when you com- when you compare Obama and uh, and uh, Trump, there's no comparison between support of Israel. Absolutely, Tom, right on the head. But yet, statistically, Jewish people vote Democrat. It goes against their morals, their principles. And yet they must be somehow deceived by some of the, you know, things that the Democrats propose because they don't really have anything in the best interest of the populace. And that's all I got to say. Maybe you could next time ask the rabbi his opinion sure. on why that is. All right. We'll try and do that. Hey, thanks for the call. All right. 522-TALK is the number. Call you on the air. What's going on? Yeah, hey, so I had a young kid in my truck today. Well, he's like 27, and he's listening to the show with me, and he made a valid point, which I agree with, is that, unfortunately, a lot of young women, they're they're more worried about what it's going to do to their body. You know, oh, I'm going to have stretch marks, or I'm going to gain weight, and it's, um, and I believe that that's true with some, some girls, because mm-hmm. they're... And I mean, I think a dude would do the same thing, you know, if they're that vain. You know, the world's a pretty vain place. We're all worried about what we look like and sure. our status in society and, you know, being famous on YouTube or Instagram or mm-hmm. Facebook and how sexy, you know, they look. And so mm-hmm. that puts a damper. Sure. People need to realize that there's consequences to to fooling around, you know, and that's the problem is everyone wants, they don't want any consequences, you know? Well, they don't want to face, they don't want to face the consequences and they don't want to take personal responsibility for their actions. Exactly. I mean, isn't that what we're, isn't that important that people realize and understand that, that there is a consequence for every action? Sure. Yeah. If you're, if you rob a bank, you don't go in and say, I'm sorry, here's the money. (laughs) But that's the problem is that (laughs) all is forgiven. Taught this. (laughs) These kids think that they should be able to do whatever they want, and there's zero consequences. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the call. Yeah, yeah, Appreciate yeah. it. All right. Well, Mayor, have a great weekend. Thanks for all the calls. Everybody be happy. Be safe this weekend. We will talk Monday morning. All right, man.
All right. Hey, thanks, everyone. Uh, It's been a great week, and uh, we really appreciate your support of the show, and uh, we appreciate uh, all of you out there texting and giving us a call, uh, giving us your opinions and everything. That's what uh, Great Talk Radio is. It's an exchange of opinions. We don't have to agree, but we don't have to argue either. So uh, that's the good point here that we've uh, that we got going here locally. So we're happy to be here. We hope you're happy to be wherever you are. And we'll see everybody bright and early Monday morning, 6 a.m. Have a great weekend.